This is a this is a nectar image taken in 1935 of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother's hand, presumably before they knew about the dangers of, of taking X-rays like this. Um, uh, we yeah, and it, it it pretty much shows like a really put important use of X-rays. But actually, it became much more significant when CT was invented. So it enabled us to see for the first time inside the body without actually taking the body apart. And um, so it's been routinely used in hospitals ever since. And uh, yeah, I mean, Nobel Prize was given for CT. So, but a problem with X-ray imaging is that it damages DNA. X-ray um, radiation is ionizing. So on the right-hand side, you can see a sort of cartoon where an X-ray can go through DNA and fragment it, which leads to um, a lot of you know, like um, negative effects, including cancer. So what we see is, in an X-ray image, where we see contrast, we're actually, to first order, at least seeing a map of where tissue is being damaged, okay? So yes, X-ray imaging is, gr is brilliant, but it comes at a cost. Now, what's the alternative? Well, X-rays are actually refracted as well as absorbed in the body, okay? Refraction just simply means a change of angle. Okay, if you think about rays, they go through an object. This is just a, uh, an example of how X-rays might go through a, a fibre. We see refraction all around us every day. Um, a good example would be when you look at the bottom of a, of a swimming pool. Uh, those lines on the bottom we know are straight and sharp edges. But because of the, the, um, the topography of the water, we know that the, the light is refracted. Refraction is just related to a change of speed in a wave. And so here we see the, 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 the wave approaching a region um, where it propagates more, more slowly. And as it emerges from this line here, it has no alternative, the wave, but to change direction. OK, so what, what we, just bringing this back to imaging the body, um, when we look at an X-ray image, what, we, what we're seeing is um, we're seeing elements that have a high atomic number. So calcium present in bone and presumably gold in the ring there shows up really brightly. Soft tissue, which is made up mainly of low atomic number um, elements, doesn't show up that well. An actual, an actual fact, you, you see very little difference between different types of soft tissue, which is the big problem for x-rays, uh, for x-ray imaging. It, it offers very little soft tissue delineation, unless you're at a synchrotron. Um, a synchrotron, I won't go into the specific details, synchrotron is roughly like a laser for x-rays. Um, they're expensive, there's not many of them. Um, so we know that we can do um, Im better imaging of soft tissue at synchrotrons, as shown by this example, which will not show up on this kind of display, but there's no other way around it. This is excised breast tissue. This is a breast tumour. These images were taken um, at a beam line in Italy at the, at the synchrotron in Trieste. And this is actually the, the, um, the phase image, which I'll discuss in a minute, which actually showed much better um, contrast. So why can't we do this in a lab? The problem is, if you're in a hospital, the X-ray source emits X-rays at a range of angles, okay? So if you're interested in seeing how those rays change direction, you've got a problem because you have already have a confusion. The second thing is the X-rays have something like multiple colors, okay? Different energies. So when we see a, a rainbow, we see the different colors because those different colors are refracted by different amounts. The exact same thing happens with X-rays. So how do we overcome this? Well, we, we could look at it from this point of view of saying, OK, if we know, if we're thinking about light, if we know that these lines are perfectly straight, can we deduce the shape of the water with that knowledge? And the answer pretty much is yes. So how do we do it? Actually, it's not rocket science. We put a small aperture here that restricts the angles of the x-rays. And we put that, that beam onto a, a hard edge. So only half of it detects the x-rays and the other half is insensitive. So the 
sample changes the angle of the x-rays. Now, some examples. I don't know if this shows up more. It certainly seems clearer to me. This is excised breast tissue. This is a st um, taken using a standard mammography machine. This is in our lab using our angular um, sensitive system. It's more sensitive. Uh, this is looking at cartilage. Um, cartilage is pretty much invisible to conventional x-rays. Um, the, car the cartilage here is, again, problem with the display, but um, this is the cartilage here, and it is, it, it, it's visible. Uh, this is rabbit esophagus. Um, if you can delineate the different um, tissue types m much more clearly, I know it's it, without giving you the comparison with the conventional um, X-ray, you, you, and without without being familiar with the esophagus, you wouldn't know. But um, our collaborators are able to do a lot more with this. This is rat heart, um, and it these images are not able to be produced. Using, using a conventional system because they're not sensitive to soft tissue. And um, yeah, it, this, is, this final example is an example where <coughs> this is a 3D printed scaffold. Um, this is before these, um, th th these are cells here that have grown seven days after being um, seeded on this scaffold. And again, this, this is an example of where we can't do that imaging using conventional x-rays. So I'll take some questions if there are any. Because I've got the box, I'll start. <laughs> so can you explain why, why you can suddenly see these things if you, if you make the rays more parallel? What's, is there any intuitive? Yeah, it's very intuitive um, because you're <coughs> So you're you're looking for a change in direction of the rays, and up until uh, without do, without making that modification, you you didn't have enough um, you you didn't have enough um, con okay your your initially your rays had too many directions present, so when you when they all shifted, there was virtually no difference, um, and also the other the other crucial thing is that when you have a detector pixel, um, each adjacent pixel would contribute as much as 50% to its neighbor. So when you shifted a beam across two pixels, you saw no difference. That's why we have to block out one of the pixels. I don't know, I, I don't know if that, I don't, I kind of like this. Hi, so I've worked at a synchrotron and it seems like a bit of an extreme case to start taking patients in there. I mean, is there any way you can do this in a smaller environment? Well, the, yeah, so this is the idea. Um, it, was, it was hard to get across in that time, but <coughs> so it was proven in synchrotrons. And so all of our work is about doing it out of the synchrotron. So that, that's the idea is, is to, yeah, and there's, there's, there's more than one group trying to do it. Um, time will tell if it if it really works. So, in terms of magnitude and the and the power or energy that you have available, uh, you can still do it in the lab as opposed to. Yeah, it yeah. it 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 can, it can be it yeah it can be done. <coughs> Very interesting, uh, like. Um, so I'm novice in the field, but I feel I am in the field of molecular imaging. Um, can you um, tell me whether you um, believe the radiotoxicity of the new method is significantly lower with respect to that of conventional X-ray? Well, it uh, is. To, to tissue. It, it is. That's it been quantified in ra in, uh, in radiotoxicity assays. Well, the way that we've done it is to do a dose calculation. So we've okay. done it in mammography. Uh -huh. um, so with our um, collaborators that are actually that are medical physicists. So we, we can achieve something like, we can achieve the same signal to noise ratio with about 20% of the dose. So it, yeah, because we, we can, 
well, basically the real the reason is because we're not relying on the X rays being absorbed 